Welcome back and tonight we have another guest anchor sitting in. You're sure to recognize him even if you don't know his real name. Well, Lamet Week recently named him best local celebrity in his best of Portland issue. Welcome to Brian Kidd, none other than cue the bagpipes, please. <laughs> It's the Unipiper, everyone. Welcome to KGW Late News. Nice to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being my co-anchor. Have you ever anchored the news before? I've never anchored the news before, and I'm very excited to try. Okay, so we know you can ride the unicycle, play the bagpipes at the same time, but can you ride the unicycle and read the news at the same time? I don't know. Okay, well, let's give it a try. Your first story is about a Christmas tree they're trying to pick out for the U.S. Capitol. So here we go. I'll run the teleprompter for you. Okay. You probably haven't picked out your Christmas tree yet, but one man has already been shopping for the perfect one. He's the architect at the U.S. Capitol. He's been walking around the Willamette National Forest trying to pick the perfect evergreen to be on display in Washington, D.C. this December. It has to be 70 feet tall, 30 feet wide, and fit on the back of a tractor trailer. It's almost like finding a needle in a haystack because to find that perfect tree, that will look good from 360 degrees, can have a bad side to it. That's a challenge. That's a real challenge because all these trees here uh, are wild grown. They're not grown to be uh, put in the middle of, of our nation's front yard. This will be the first tree from the Willamette National Forest to be featured at the Capitol and only the second tree from Oregon. So what do you think? Do you think the Unipiper might be able to help? Maybe playing the bagpipes will help them find just the perfect tree? I could at least give them some <laughs> festive music. <laughs> That's right. That would be great. Well, you have a pretty big following online, but there's a dog out there that comes pretty close. So introduce us now to Ivy. Okay, so this is Ivy. The Australian Shepherd from North Carolina has more than 16,000 followers on Instagram. And that's because instead of teaching her to fetch or sit, Ivy Zoner has taught her to paint. She uses her mouth to hold a custom paintbrush and listens to her owner's cues to know when to paint. She even has her own beret. I just put the easel on the floor and she knew I'm supposed to use my nose for this. And so she touched it with her nose. I clicked and gave her food and I thought, okay, she'll know exactly what to do. Proceeds from Ivy's paintings go to different animal charities. Her most recent earnings are heading to rescue in California, helping pets impacted by wildfires. Okay, that's pretty good that the dog can paint too, but if it could also play the bagpipes, might get as many Instagram followers as you. Or maybe a flaming paintbrush. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. We just had the news read on a unicycle. I mean, that was a, I'd like to see that every <laughs> night. That was cool. amazing. Maybe Good you could be there. my permanent co-anchor. That oh, would be fun. What stuff. is the weirdest thing you've done as a unipiper? Well, it actually involves this. <laughs> 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 this is up there, but just edging it out was the time that I was asked to play actually for a group of dogs. Um, and they were trading, uh, 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 seeing guide dogs in Portland, and they wanted to expose them to something that they may actually encounter on the streets. And the Unipiper was their choice. Wow. Because you're everywhere, it seems like. <laughs> did you always want to be the Unipiper? Yeah, I was wondering that too. What did you do before you were Unipiping? I don't know what I did with my life, um, but it was not something I set out to do. It's something I just sort of fell into, and uh, now I can't can't see myself really doing anything different. But you were a science major, right? <laughs> yes, my background was in uh, marine biology. Yes. And Love here, yeah, science. And, and science. And kids, so, this is what a marine biology degree <laughs> will get you today. <laughs> so I got it, dude, you must have like six pack abs. The core workout you get unicycling must be pretty intense, yeah? It's just about all the exercise that uh, I need. That you would need, yeah. You know, well, another fantastic. cool thing that you did is you threw out the first pitch at the Portland Pickles game. What was that like? That was uh, probably the hardest thing I've ever done on the unicycle. Um, maybe second to reading the news, but it was Keep Portland Weird Night, and I had to actually play the bagpipes while throwing the ball. Wow. And I was so happy, and I, I was scared I wasn't going to make it all the way to home plate. But I wound up and gave it my best shot, and uh, I think I made it there, and the pitcher caught it. You did a oh, great you did. job. That's awesome. It. We see the video right there. That's so great. So a lot of people ask, do you, is this your full-time job, or do you have another job? Uh, I do have another job. Um, it, it involves airplanes and lasers, um, which are not like unicycles and bagpipes. Um, but uh, it, I 
make three-dimensional topographic maps from the air. Um, I get to see all sorts of amazing places. That's cool. Um, especially, you know, the scenery that we have around here. You appreciate it in a whole new way from the air. A little different air. than being the Unipiper. Hey, you know, Matt has had a whole lot of hot air in his forecast lately. Thanks, Laurel. <laughs> <laughs> so we wondered if you might be able to teach Matt something about playing the bagpipe. We can certainly try really? that. Yes, All right, you can so, make, yeah. I can bagpipe. Yeah, I, I even brought you brought you your own set of oh, bagpipes. Here we go. Lisa. I'm gonna trade oh. out. All right. So first of all, how do you hold I'll it? I don't want to damage. Okay, here. It. And you know, since I'm trying the right. bagpipe, um, Laurel is gonna try unicycling. <laughs> okay. So that's how this oh, is gonna that's go. Fun. Laurel, yeah. jump on that thing. Okay. So okay, this, pipe, this tall that. pipe is gonna rest right there on your okay, shoulder. Got it. Yeah. Um, and then this is gonna hang down. Okay. And this is what's gonna go in your mouth. Okay. And then this arm is gonna go all the way around on the back and then it's going to grab whoa, whoa i'm sliding there yeah, just let okay. it let it fall Look. back on your shoulder okay. just like that okay and then this hand can come down on what's called the chanter down here yeah and let the bag go in there okay all right and now you're going to blow in here and just all the air you got put it in there you're going to have to fill up the bag and then you're going to have to oh, yeah that's it that's it keep going that. yes <laughs> i'm going to help you yes we have I sound, like, I sound like a cat that's dying, you know. <laughs> Are you getting lightheaded? <laughs> um, no, but boy, yeah, that, boy. Now I thought the core strength was coming from the unicycle. I think it's from the <laughs> bagpiping too. <laughs> That's all I got. All Girl, right. get on that unicycle. Okay, I'm unicycling next. Let's see yeah, no, I, I wore a dress. After probably the break, not the best. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. after all the right. break, right? Hey, thanks, Brian. That's great stuff. I yes. don't want to damage. Right. Thanks okay, for bringing extra. Uh, back from you. Another yeah. part of your job, though, is to toss to Matt and ask him about the weather. Okay, Matt, is there any break in sight from this? Uh, in Impressive, atrocious heat. Yes, it Laurel's is. Laurel's never done it better. No, that's, there is a break right. inside, actually, Brian. Thanks for coming on in. It's